what's going on y'all i'm sorry that the light might be bad i'm over here at um my mom's house um and they're up there asleep so i gotta not be too loud but um <clears throat> i just finished this baby reindeer right It was a few of y'all that was asking me, was I going to watch it? Was I going to talk about it? And I was adamant after I started watching it that I was not going to talk about it. But I'm not going to be on here and talk about it too much. I'm going to just say this. <laughs> it was overhyped. It was overhyped. Okay. Um, it was weird. And I, you wanted to feel... Well, were we supposed to feel bad for Donnie? Were we literally supposed to feel bad for Donnie? Because I didn't feel bad for him. And I know that this show is about trauma, trauma bonding, you know, people going to going through things. And all that I got out of this situation, this whole seven episode, it was a quick watch. This whole seven episode is that this is why therapy is needed. This is why people need to feel comfortable with the people around them so that they can speak to people about the stuff that is going on. You have somebody that went through a terrible trauma that a lot of people unfortunately have went through. And instead of, you know, talking it out or coming to the realization that they might need therapy or they should go to therapy, even if they don't want to tell the people around them, they hold it in. OK, and that's no fault to themselves. That's no fault to anybody because, you know, it happens a lot. Some people just don't want to come to that conclusion don't want to realize that yes something terrible did happen to me and i don't know how to fix it and it makes them probably feel weak and less of a person or whatever but i'm here to tell you that if you go through any type of trauma most likely you will need some therapy and that is okay to help you talk through it get through it cope with it go through the grieving process so that you can get back on the right footing if you can if that's a possibility right I just, first of all, don't ever suggest nothing like this to me again, <laughs> because although I understood what it was about, the transference of energy, the transference of trauma, the transference of, you know, trauma response, okay, it bored me to tears. It bored me. It bored me. I almost started to cut this thing off after the first episode. But the people kept on saying, no, Ashley, it's going to get better to us. To, um, it's going to pick up. It's going to pick up. It's going to pick up. It never really picked up for me. Okay. Um, but basically what it's about is seven episodes. And they said that this is a true story. So I don't know if it's the person that has reviewed or, I mean, produced or written this. If it's his story or if it's somebody else. But they said it's based on a true story. And I do know that I've heard that, you know, the a real Martha, Martha Scott is out here trying to sue Netflix and then going to try to say that the guy that did this show, um, because she was really stalking him, was uh, now stalking her by putting this movie out or this, this, this series out. On the one hand, I'm not going to necessarily say that she wrong. No, no, he's not stalking her, but... It's bringing up stuff that probably was laid to rest. You know what I'm saying? And now you got her back up in the public. You literally got her in the public now. Okay. And so, um, you finna bring up a whole, I, I hope she don't go back to doing the stuff that she was doing. I hope mama got some help, but this, I, I don't know where to go from here and, and how this going to work. But at the same time, if this is his story and if he wanted to put this out there because this is what he went through. He is very much entitled to do so. So I get both sides. You know what I'm saying? Do I say that he's stalking her? No, no, no. But then again, by the way that they ended this girl. So basically, you got this guy named Donnie. He's trying to be a comedian. Donnie, Donald, Donison, baby. I don't know what you want to call you. We're going to call you Donnie for short. Because I don't feel like that's your real name. I feel like that's a nickname. But Mr. Donnie, 
comedy ain't your thing, okay? I was waiting to laugh every time he was up on that stage trying to make the people laugh. When he was working in the bars trying to make the people laugh, I felt so embarrassed for him. When he was getting dressed, putting them props and everything, I said, you are a, you ain't a pub. Then people don't want to hear that. And then you want to come out in them sprinkly stuff. Gr sir, ain't nobody trying to hear that, okay? But... I mean, it is what it is. He wasn't funny. And um, sometimes, you know, it takes a lot for a person to believe that the, the path that they want to go just ain't necessarily the path that they need to go. But you got him. He working in the pub or whatever. We got this lady, Martha, that comes in. She's sad. She's in her feelings. He winds up giving her a uh, tea on the house or whatever. But because she says she can't afford it. And right then and there... This communication should have ceased. Okay. And honestly, I get trying to be, and see this, this, this is a scary thing because you have people that want to be chivalrous. You have people that want to be nice and show kindness to people, especially when you see somebody down, right? But you don't want it, something like this to happen. So I don't want this to be like people say, Oh, I can't be uh, happy or I can't, you know, look out for a person or whatever and just show some kindness to a person because they might get the wrong impression or whatever because I said I offered to pay this for them because they was in a time of need or, you know, I gave them a free drink on the house or I paid for this to pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Because literally all he did was give her a drink and she started some conversation. And then when she said that she was a lawyer and this big shot lawyer that worked with this person, this person, this person, he should have stopped it right there. Okay. But at the same time, she kept on coming in, coming in and coming in and coming in. I'm sitting here like, how come you ain't question the fact that it took you too long to question the fact that she was not a lawyer. And then it took you too long for you to go ahead and look her up and see who she was. Okay. Um, because how you a lawyer with all these flats and different places that you supposedly own and living at, but yet you can't afford a cup of tea. You can't afford a drink. Okay. Every time you come up in there, you talk about some, let me get a drink on the house or no, no, you come up in there talking about something you ain't, you, you can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? And so he's taking pity on her, you know? Um, but then you find out that after she keeps coming by and, you know, in her head, she's already then made it seem as if they're in a relationship just because he was being nice to her. You just because he was entertaining her. And I'm thinking this is probably because she never got none of that when she was younger. You know what I'm saying? And she's in her 40s. She, when, when we see her, she was 42 and she was also about to turn 43. And so, you know, this whole stuff was going on for like six months before he actually went to the police about it. And see, that part made me mad too. And I, I know I, I, I gotta be careful by saying that because it's like he is a victim, but at the same time, you don't want a victim shame because, you know, that's the same thing that people say when people have been assaulted, um, been harassed and all this stuff. And they take, uh, you know, on a workplace or by an ex or whatever. And they take, you know, forever to go in to report it or whatever. And then people are like, why did you take so long? But in this instant, you see it escalating and it took for it. And if I swear, listen, if it wasn't for the fact that, um, she threatened his mama and dad got the phone number to the mom and daddy, the daddy. Uh, he probably wouldn't have never went to the cops because we saw what he wouldn't probably went as far as he did with the cops. You know what I'm saying? She wound up attacking his girlfriend, who was a trans woman. Yay for trans representation, which I love. That was probably one of the one thing that I really did like about the show. Uh, I like the fact that the girls are getting out there for real, for real. And it, is, it wasn't done in a disgusting way. It wasn't done in a mocking way. It wasn't done in a disrespectful way. It was done tastefully, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? But that bitch attacked your girl. And you went to the cops and said that that lady was stalking you or whatever. But you ain't tell them about the fact that she, she put her hands on your girl or whatever. I mean, fuck pulled her hair out and everything. I said, child, Terry, you better than me. Because at that moment, when I found out that he didn't even, uh, you know, 
he ain't even tell the police about me, baby. It would have been over and done with. Could put that strike two. That strike two. Okay. Strike one was when we went out to the club or whatever, and we got a little fucked up after we finally stopped going to dimly lit uh little spots that he always took her because he ain't want nobody to know he was with a trans woman because he was uncomfortable with his sexuality because he was still trying to figure it out. Um and. <clears throat> But he was falling in love with this trans woman, right? And then they finally go out to a club or whatever, something out in the open, okay? They get a little messed up. He was high and everything. And, you know, she was a little drunk. They was on the train. She was like, I want you to kiss me properly. Girl, she waiting for a kiss. This motherfucker is just sitting there, standing there looking around. And he got so in his head. He got so in his head thinking that people were looking at him and they probably really weren't. And it probably was just his his own brain overthinking. Now, in that aspect, I can understand it because, you know, I'm an overthinker. I'm an overthinker and I have social anxiety. You know, sometimes I would do a PDA, sometimes I don't. But in his case, it was more so he was thinking about people can tell whether or not she's you know, a trans woman or not, you know, he's not comfortable with that. And the way he backed out that train when the door opened and let that girl tell you better than me, because I would have said deuces, deuces. Okay. It would have been over and it would have been done with right then and there. But no, you know, she came to this little comedy show and, you know, she found out about Martha and all that stuff. Imagine he was lying to her about all her, his name, his profession and all that stuff. He had to come clean about all of that. Baby, once I found out that you lied to me about all of what you did and who you are, girl, it's over and it's done with. Okay, I ain't got time. I don't have time. But see, Terry and them had a connection. Terry and Downey had a connection and, you know, they was doing their thing. Now, here's the thing that fucked me up. When they finally was about to do it, he couldn't get it up. And see, that was the reason why, part of the reason why him and his ex-girlfriend, mind you, he was living in his ex-girlfriend's mama's home. What y'all doing over there in the UK? <laughs> and she was black. I said, y'all black is different from, because I don't think that'll happen over here. Y'all will let y'all um daughter or son's ex still stay with y'all girl please i feel like half the people most of the people saying um no you gotta go she ain't she done with you she moved on he done with you he moved on you gotta go okay baby i don't, I don't know where they do those things that they probably do but i just don't know i said what well, that is different but um you know she was he was living there and basically they were not he would he shut off emotionally to her he wasn't having sex with her or anything like that and we come to realize the reason why i will say episode four was a heavy episode but i was expecting it because people had already said what was going on and then as soon as um the episode comes on it gives a warning about what will happen if you don't want to be triggered i'm not going to go into details about it i'm just going to simply say it goes back into his background because it is something that could be triggering triggering it's dealing with sa it's dealing with the r word and all of that um and basically it, him trying to get put on like five years ago and he comes across this guy in a pub who supposed to be like this tv show writer and director or something like that and he's a big thing and he basically um filled his head up with thinking that he can make it and he can you know he has the skills to do this and to do that and basically he had him come over to his house to do some writing and all this stuff and see what he written and all that only to get him high, start him off on drugs. He started him off on drugs and a different level of drugs just kept on escalating. Um, it, basically, he was grooming his man. He was grooming his man until he got him to a point where he got him on crack, got him on acid, got him on MDM and MDAM, whatever you want to call it. What is that? Molly ecstasy, whatever. He had him on all these drugs where he would pass out. And he would not know what happened to him. And he'll wake up realizing something actually did happen to him because his genitals would feel funny. His genitals would be wet. It would have saliva on it and all that stuff. Baby, when he woke up that last time and he took that shower and it stung back there because dude actually did what he did. And it was just going into the whole thing of, you know, I'm sorry, y'all. How 
he didn't leave. He stayed a few days, you know what I'm saying? And then dude kind of turned off from him, you know? And ever since that experience, you know, he couldn't like connect with another person. And it started to have him questioning his sexuality. So he's going around, you know, basically allowing his body to be abused by man and woman, you know what I'm saying? And um, <clears throat> that's his trauma response. He was confused. He's trying to figure out why did this happen to him and why did he let it happen to him? Not realizing you didn't let it happen to you. Okay. That man took advantage of you in a moment where you never gave consent. You never gave consent. And he was an older man as well. You know, it was given very much Harvey Weinstein, you know, um, and all these other me too predators and everything that's out there. It was given very much that, but the fact that, you know, this is something that is prevalent and it has been going on in the industry and all over, especially lately, these predators getting called out. I really wish that the predator that did this to him would have been, we saw him go back to him at the end, you know, and I was just confused by that. And I'm like, was it something as you needed closure? But then dude was like, you know, I'll... I got a job for you and I'll pay. Because he was doing all this other stuff for him and he wasn't paying him. He was just getting him high, you know. So he was thinking, was this man just lying to me, you know, just to take advantage? And that's exactly what he was doing. But, um, again, this is all about trauma response. And he, from that instance, he was just trying to figure out, it just fucked him up. It, it messed him up emotionally, physically, mentally, everything. It kind of shut him off. And when he had that time where he did that last comedy stand up that went viral, you know, and he had a mental break on the stage. He had a mental break on that stage and he just let it all come out. And I would listen and we did not see him go to therapy after that. Even after that moment, he didn't go to therapy. Therapy was not even mentioned. But you have Martha. <laughs> You have Martha who just being a typical stalker. And mind you, when he finally looked her up, he finally looked her up. And it comes out that she had done this before. Uh, a previous employee, somebody said something about um, she at one point stalked a cop as well. You know how crazy you got to be to stalk a cop? The one that can put you in jail? Like, girl, what? Stalk the cop. My bad. I accidentally stopped recording. Stalk the cop. And, um... Did something to a baby, wound up getting four years in jail, um, and then she came back out and, you know, she was living in squalor. That one scene where she was sitting out there on the bench, you know, after the way that she got into the girlfriend's, the ex-girlfriend mama's home and disguising herself as one of the people that was coming to her little cooking class or whatever cooking group, that was fucked up. And he should have went to the jail, uh, cops then. Okay. But, you know, he, she was sitting outside the, at the bus stop. And at one point after he cussed her ass out, well, um, she did what she did to, I don't know if it was when she did, uh, beat up Terry or whatever. Either way, mama was sitting outside and she was sitting out there. I don't know if it was for hours or days or whatever. She wasn't even doing nothing. She was looking all sad and depressed. This man going to walk past her, take a tissue and wipe her nose and then take her back to her apartment, get her something to drink, something hot. Bitch, first of all, you see how she looked. You see how she live. I'm not stepping foot in that trash. Like, she's a hoarder. She's disgusting. You know, she's so busy stalking people that she can't even clean up her own place. You know what I'm saying? Uh, leaving pictures of her in, in, in the brown pants. I said, girl, put that shit up. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. You, you, you too old to be doing all of this stuff. You have, have some self esteem about yourself. And that was lacking on both of their parts. And I feel like she kind of figured out that, you know, he didn't really love himself and she didn't love herself. And then she was like, bitch, we Kendrick spirit. So let's go ahead and do this thing together. And he didn't give her that, you know, complete energy that she wanted because um, she just kept on thinking in her head that they was in a relationship and they really wasn't. And he thinking in order to get her to stop, let me play into her delusions and say that we're breaking up. So that she can stop it. But that didn't work. That didn't help. You just continue to play into it. You know what I'm saying? And I am here for Terry's telling him, 
you like what she's doing. You may say that she is stalking you, wish she was and wish she is or whatever at the time. But he liked it. He liked it because he let it go on and he indulged in it. He indulged in it and he said it himself. And I was just looking at it and I was like, so what are we supposed to do with this? <laughs> and this is why I kept on saying like, this is, you need therapy. You need therapy to understand why you keep on doing this stuff. Because once it became, she, he trying to get her arrested she stalking him and then all of a sudden she she finally gets his phone number right once she gets his phone number and she kept on calling and calling and calling and calling and calling he winds up downloading all of the phone calls or whatever and he's trying to go through them and listen to each and every one of them to try to piece together why she's doing what she's doing eventually she does get caught because she winds up threatening him and his family or whatever um she pleads guilty to harassing him for two years basically and um she gets sentenced to nine months in prison baby do you think that that would have ended all no because we're no longer talking about her in a sense he's literally doing the same thing that she was doing but not trying to get at her but the thing is she became obsessed with him and now he's obsessed with her and that goes to show what terry was saying about how you like what's going on you like living in this space and he even said it when he was on that um stage and he had that little mental break um he just he he said he likes being in a place of hating himself and the reason why he kept on indulging with martha was because she was telling him what he wanted to hear and what he wanted to hear was that he was important that he was somebody that he was probably attractive he was attentive he was all of that giving him compliments she was obsessed with him and this whole time he'd been trying to get that high from a fame he wanted to become famous by being a comedian and his career just never took off and so you know he never really felt important he never felt like he had it or whatever it's like people that really feel like they have no one and they're invisible you know what i'm saying i understood i kind of connected with that because y'all heard me mention that a few times on this channel about me feeling that way like you know i'm invisible or uh <clears throat> like yeah just i be in my own feelings and i be to myself because i really just feel like i don't really have anybody like that so i understood that but for him to get so obsessed with martha Baby, I'm not finna be obsessed with the person that's stalking me. I mean, I understand you want to figure it out. But once you, the bitch go to jail, I'm like, done. Okay, let me go back to my life. It came to a point where he was turning down gigs because um, you know how they do with a viral sensation. Somebody, a viral moment when he had that little breakdown at the um comedy thing somebody had filmed it put it on youtube and it went viral and of course he got interviews and stuff for it and he got jobs or you know gigs from it or whatever i'm like mm, that goes to show you know it ain't about talent because he was not funny he was not funny i don't care what nobody say baby he was not funny okay um but yeah you got that and he wound up, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm holding this because I did not plan on recording anything while I was on vacation. But um, and he wound up doing all of that and then started turning down gigs and being more so into himself because he became obsessed with trying to get information on Martha and trying to piece things together to the point where he's literally listening every single moment, moment to her voice. And at this point... When it came to the point where he was in a relationship with Terry and when they actually finally had sex, they tried a couple of a few times and he just couldn't get it up. He masturbated to Martha's picture real quick. He had to think about Martha to in order to get it in with Terry and see. And she he was like, I don't even know what that is because I'm not attracted to her. But you got feelings for it because y'all on that same plane. And that is some trauma bonding mess. That's trauma bonding one on one right about that. Okay. And I'm just sitting here like, oh my God, where is the therapist? Where is somebody saying therapy, 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 therapy? Or somebody, okay? Because this just won it, you know. 
um, having all the messages and stuff on the wall and, you know, listening to it on the iPod and all of that stuff. Well, his Samsung device, it, 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 it just became, I don't know, like, what are we supposed to get out of this? This is telling us what not to do. Is this a warning? I know this is his true story, according to him, but I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Um, I did like the scene where he, I will say, when he actually told his parents what was going on. And then, you know, the whole thing about his sexuality coming up and how he don't know if he's gay, bisexual, whatever. I would say that you're pansexual. Okay. That's just all it is. You like what you like when you like it and how you like it. That's just all that it is. Um, but he was like, I was scared to tell you. Because I didn't want you to look at me as less than your son. And I didn't want you to look at me as less than a man. Less of a man, I should say. And his father said, well, would you look at me if as less of a man? And I said, wait a minute, what? He said, I grew up in a Catholic church. And Donnie said, I don't understand. As soon as he said, I grew up in a Catholic church, I'm pretty sure he was probably saying that he was an altar boy in the Catholic church. And I was like, yep, I ain't need no further explanation. And I knew exactly what he was saying. I don't understand how come Donnie couldn't pick up on it right then and there, but I picked up on it real quick. I said, oh shit, you know, so they had a moment right there. So it's like, I can't judge you for something that happened to you being, you know, taken advantage of when I was taken advantage of as well. But I was younger. Either way, we both were taken advantage of by older people, you know, people that, took something from us and messed us up internally and emotionally and mentally. You know what I'm saying? So I did like that moment. Um, Other than that, ugh, girl, I said I wasn't going to do too much for this, but, you know, I get to talking. I'm going to just say this. Don't ever suggest nothing like this. <laughs> I will say it had a couple of good parts. The parts that I talked about, I did like the trans representation and I did like when the dad, you know, was able to connect with his son on that part. But other than that, and the way that his, his parents were, you know, supportive of him. Other than that, girl, it was boring. It was boring to me, to me. I know some people probably got some other things out of it or whatever, but I just didn't see people were talking about it. And I really wasn't going to say anything about it or even watch it. But then people kept on asking me, was I going to watch it? Was I going to talk about it or whatever? So I eventually, I actually downloaded it so I can be on the plane and watch it. But baby, I don't know why did I think that I was going to be able to watch this while I was on the plane. Knowing damn well I was sleepy as hell. As soon as we got on that plane, girl, I was knocked out. Knocked out for two hours. But, um, yeah. <sighs> if I had to rate it. One to ten, I probably give it a five. I give it a five. That's just that's, that's just, mm, and that's being nice. That's being nice because it could have been a it could have been a three, but it's a five. It's not something I'll watch again, but I didn't get the hype. And that's all I got for it because <laughs> I thought I was going to say something else. That's it. I didn't get the hype. Because sometimes things get caught, ca you catch on. And I know somebody probably be like, when they're looking at this, like, damn, Ashley, you didn't like it? I thought you would have liked it. I thought you would have liked it. No, 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 no. I feel like sometimes I'm weird in that sense. Like, a lot of things that people like, I do not like. <laughs> like what y'all find this funny i don't find it funny y'all like this i don't like you know something like that so maybe it's just me but yeah that's just my honest opinion about it you guys tell me how you feel about it um what did you take from it but like i said i understood what it was about in certain parts i get the trauma it's it's all about trauma you know what i'm saying it kind of somewhat reminded me of May I help you or something? You y'all remember? Um, oh my God, what is her name? What is her name? Oh, from Chewing Gum, the show that she had that was talking about when she experienced sexual assault and all that stuff and how she dealt with it. I like that. For some reason, I like that. But I don't. This kind of remind me of that because they both telling their stories because both of these is what these are their experiences, right? 
But, um, I don't know. This one just didn't really do it for me. Oh, my stomach grinding. Girl, I just realized I only ate one meal earlier today. Oh, that's fine. I'll eat it later. But, yeah, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And, um, I will see y'all later. Peace. I'm finna go back to enjoy my, um, <sighs> straight from New Orleans to my mama's house. Uh oh. I'll see y'all later.